Thanks for joining us for another edition of Communication Steroids, the weekly podcast that shows you how to become a better public speaker, a more effective presenter, and a conscious and clear communicator. This is where you can find tips, tools, and techniques that you can put to use today. Here are your hosts of Communication Steroids, Tim Gonzo-Gordon and Roger Pike. I'm going to let you start this time, Roger. You are? Well... Hello and welcome to another edition of Communication Steroids, the podcast, and I'm Roger. You picked that cue card up really nice. Yeah, well, you know, what can I say? I am a pro. And I'm Tim Gordon, and you are a pro. You you spent uh, many moons behind the radio microphone. Oh, yes, I have spent my share of time (laughs) speaking over, around, and through a microphone. We uh, did want to talk about another topic. You know, we were going to get to that at at some point eventually. We'll we'll try that right now. Uh, One of the things we want to talk about was... uh, Webinar presentation skills, what to do, what not to do. There's a lot of things that are very similar to mm-hmm. speaking in public. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're more concerned in public with your with your presence mm-hmm. and what you look like mm-hmm. and how you interact with people and your gestures and all that sort of stuff. But when you're behind uh, a microphone or on a telephone doing a teleseminar, and this could apply for either of those, uh, you really don't have the visual aspect and if you're doing a webinar, of course, you have basically a PowerPoint or you're showing your your screen. So that's your visual aspect. And some sort of lapel mic often or yeah. something like that. No, nothing uh, like one of these things. Uh, well, it depends. And I've yeah. heard some, some webinars that do, but you're right. A lot of them just do it over the phone. Right. And that's where the audio comes from. And I think that's the first thing to do is can your equipment give you the best, highest quality of uh, th- then better than a phone. Well, actually, what I was talking about is when you're speaking live, you're going to have some kind of lapel mic oh, yeah, or, right, or right. something okay. like that, as opposed to a webinar in which, by golly, you should have something like this. You should like have this. something like this, this or that, exactly. Yeah. And if you don't have one of those, have a headset, because that's usually better uh, quality than a telephone. Mm-hmm. And if you can do your audio online, like on a VOIP, which a lot of the, the uh, platforms are going to now, like go to webinar, free webinar, you can do the audio online so that people don't even have to actually call in. And that's much preferable. And I did a poll the last time I did a webinar. I said, what would you prefer? Do you want to listen on the phone, or would you prefer to listen to the sound coming through your computer speakers? And what was and the poll result? And it was like result? 90% through the computer speakers. Yeah. yeah. So that gives you the opportunity to set up a very nice microphone. And this, this is like a $65 microphone. It's a mm-hmm. condenser microphone. I run it through a little uh, mixing board into the back of my computer, into the sound card, and it sounds pretty darn good it's yeah, a professional it level quality uh, sound and, and microphone if you're on a uh, one of those cheap headsets and there are good ch- headsets and cheap headsets and there are cheap microphones that usually come with a computer if you buy a computer in the whole package mm-hmm. those won't give you the sound that you want so that's the first thing is what technology are you using and what can you improve upon to give your uh, listeners the best sound and then once you have a good microphone n- know how to use it uh, yeah mic technique and, and I, 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 I and I'll say it Right up front, I'm not wearing a headset, so <laughs> I don't have the best microphone. You don't microphone know exactly what it sounds like. No, I don't. And, but and you're actually result, you're working it pretty well because you're not popping your peas. You're not symbolizing my abs. <laughs> and that's my tendency is to swallow the mic. I'll, I'll get in real tight. And if you have the – a lot of microphones are directional. These are if you get right in there and you start – up, 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 popping your peas right in. Then it, it just sounds very obvious. Yeah, so I have to be real careful that I keep a couple of inches between me and the microphone and kind of speak across it as opposed to directly into it. And then I sound okay, but I, I, I can't hear myself because I'm not wearing wearing head. Some of the other not, techniques. To, to use the vernacular, I'm not wearing a set of cans. Not, not wearing a set of a cans, yes. A set of cans, yeah. Yeah, okay. So another, uh, when it comes to, Putting on a good presentation, a lot of the techniques that you use on stage also work online, and that is pacing yourself, being mm-hmm. organized. Mm-hmm. Don't get off on a tangent that just kind of goes and goes and goes. It really helps when you do have a webinar that you've got your slides there and you show those. Now, slides, I think, on a webinar are different than slides on uh, in a live presentation. In a live presentation, they're there to support an idea mm-hmm. or an emotion that you're trying to get across. Whereas online, they're really delivering information, information that you that people can look at and take notes from while you're supporting that with your talk. Yeah, and, and you have to remember that a, a, a very great deal of a, a big part of communication is facial expression and gestures, m- movement, body language, uh, and a lot of that is either muted or lost altogether when you're doing a webinar on computer. So you've got to maximize the parts that are left over. 
pitch, rate, vocal variety. If you if you if you if you are doing it on camera as we're doing, uh, your facial expressions. Uh, you maximize that because you do lose things. You do lose gestures. You do lose movement, uh, and all of those things impart meaning. Inflection, dynamics, those yeah, those it, types of things. Just can, so can can go a long way. Uh, of course, it's very important to stick to your time schedule. And if you're doing a webinar where you're actually trying to tell and teach something uh, to somebody, as opposed to you're going to try and sell something at the end, even if you're trying to sell something, give them good information. I think we last week I went on a bit of a rant about a <laughs> webinar I had just seen where the guy spent a half an hour talking about his story about how how he'd been so broke for so long and and you know and then he found the mentor and all all this other stuff. And he gave you fifteen and, minutes. And of fifteen minutes of good information in an hour, and then you know fifteen minutes of that was a pitch. And at the end of the thing, I just said, you know, that was really not worth an hour at a all. Waste of my waste hour. of time. So don't waste people's time. An hour there, you will never get. Now here's the, here's the thing: there's so many people out there doing webinars and teleseminars that to get someone to your webinar, you have made a really great leap that most mm. people haven't at that point. I, I swear, I, I get inv- invitations to five or ten webinars per day, right? For the newsletters I right. get, and I can do maybe one a week. Maybe maybe one or two a month, and depends on what it is. I can squeeze a few more in, but I don't have a lot of time because my time is is busy and, and precious. So, assume that your audience is of the same ilk that they don't really have a lot of time. So that if you've got them in there, give them good information, make it worth their while. And it, it, it's like a, a lost leader in 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 retail world. Uh, people who are good at retail marketing tell me that when you have something that you are discounting below cost in order to get people in right you make sure that it's a quality item you don't sell all of these people crap because then they think everything else in your store is crap so even though you're discounting it below below cost you make sure it's something nice so that they that as it will be representative of your merchandise and so it's true of your webinars uh, if if you are doing a webinar in order to attract people to the other services that you provide from which you expect to, to make more money, even if you're charging for your webinar, uh, uh, you want to make sure that you are delivering quality. Give a lot of value, more than what they've paid for. Mm-hmm. And if it's if they're paying 39 bucks or 49 bucks, I've seen webinars uh, uh, for as much as a couple of hundred dollars, hundred yeah. and a half. Uh, people are giving very specific, valuable information that they are selling and you've got to make sure you deliver on that. And some of that delivery is you're doing some follow-up, which is, okay, you're going to get a PDF which has the the uh, transcript of the webinar. You're going to get a recording of the webinar in case you want to review it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to get a follow-up, uh, you know, half-an-hour consultation or whatever the things are that you're offering. And that's in your marketing plan. But the actual... Uh, idea of the webinar is to give as much value as possible so that they want to come back and get more stuff from you. From you. Yeah. When, you, when you're doing a teleseminar, you don't have the screen in front of you, so what kind of things stand out there as far as uh, doing a teleseminar, Roger? Well, Many of the same things, obviously. Uh, uh, I haven't done many. I've done a couple, uh, and I've seen uh, more than my share. I, I guess the, the, the thing that, that I, I'd talk about more than what I would do is what I wouldn't do <laughs> okay, well, wouldn't you do in, in a in a teleseminar? Well, I would remember that I, I first of all, I would remember that it's still in a public appearance, and I would make yes. sure that I was well groomed, well turned out, and <laughs> ready to speak as I would as if I were standing up. Timeliness, and, yes, uh, promptness. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, once again, it's a matter of professionalism, and you should always look like a professional. I mean, uh, you, you have to be cautious. I would say that uh, some of the annoying things that I've run across on webinars and teleseminars, more so on teleseminars, is that when when you get there and you're ready to go, say at the top of the hour, if it's two or three past and they still haven't started, uh, something's not right. Yep. Yeah, if you've got technical issues, something's not right. Now, those do come up, but they should know well enough by now to figure out what those technical issues are. And they should also, uh, the last time I checked in on a, on a, on a webinar, they had a clock in there. It says, we are starting in 2 minutes, 22 seconds. And it ticked down, and right at the exact top, they started. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have someone else introduce you, that's good. And you have a scripted introduction so that you don't go on and on and on about uh, why you're doing this. And, and, and next thing you know, you've spent 10 minutes talking about your woe is me story or whatever the story is. Those types of things are annoying. Get right to the meat of the matter and be very prompt about it and deliver the information that you've been 
scheduled to deliver. Well, I'll give you an example of that from our own experience. You and I attended an online training for a product that we ended up buying. Uh, and uh, in the online training, the, the trainer actually took control of our computer uh, so that we could see the product demoed. It was, it was, a, it's a, it was a computer tool. Uh, and we were listening to his uh, training via uh, phone link. Right. Uh -huh. And my phone link didn't work. Yours did from the very beginning, but mine didn't. And I thought it was going to be a big snafu and that we were going to be, be forever uh, getting this straightened out so I could hear what was going on. And within seconds, the fellow had it solved. He'd sent me another link. I, I used that one, and it worked just fine. And everything was both hunky and dory, and, and we started on exact, exactly on the dot of when we were supposed to start. Yeah. Uh, that company was ready. And because they're ready to do their training, I think they're probably ready to deliver me a product <laughs> that we can use. And yeah. we bought it. We, we did, bought yes. the product. And uh, for one of our clients that we're working with. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, professionalism is very key. Uh, don't ramble on. You know, don't be unprofessional, and mm -hmm. all those little things add up to unprofessionalism. If you do them wrong, if you do them right, they add up to a very professional presentation. Mm -hmm. Promptly get out. Mm -hmm. If you say, oh, we're going to get out at exactly the top of the hour, you know, at one minute till, you should be wrapping it up. Yep. Now, you can. it's, it's okay to say, by the way, we wrapped up our thing today, and if anyone wants to stick around, I'll do a QA and a for the next 15 minutes or whatever the, the, the thing is, and offer to do that. And that gives them the option to stick around or not. But you've delivered all, everything you've promised Promise. up to that point. The base yeah. presentation ends on yeah. time. Starts on time, ends yeah. on time, looks good. All right. Well, that's our podcast. We've I'm wrapped it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us here on communicationsteroids.com. I'm Tim Gordon. And he said that he was Roger, and I'll believe him up to this point. Yeah. So have a good one. <laughs>